welcome to the 7.30 class, okay? And we, the team of this class, we take a look at the game from 21st century, and I actually found this game played a few days ago here at the club, Sinclair Cup Tournament. Most of you probably seen the game, but you saw that Caruana won, but maybe didn't quite understand all the ideas, all the ideas or the subtleties, how he managed to win the game. So, and I will explain to you, it was a great game by Caruana, positional game. And uh, he won, and it was his only win in the tournament. So he had eight draws, and he managed to win this last game. So let's take a look. Let's take a look to see how it happened. E45, knight c6. His opponent is Giri, Anish Giri, and bishop e5, a6. So we have which opening? Rui Lopez opening, right? Bishop a4, knight f6, castles. And knight takes c4. Bishop e7 is another move in this position. Bishop e7, then rook e1, b5, bishop b3. But he played knight takes e4. This is called the open Spanish, yeah? And uh, this leads to a force sequence, couple of force sequence moves. d4, b5, bishop b3. And uh, it's very risky to open up the e file because rook e1 will come in and it's going to be big problems. Like, for example, if you take, then the, there could be some even bishop d5 type of moves. Big, big problem here. So, you don't want to do that. So, he played d5, took bishop e6. He played bishop e6 to protect the d5 pawn. So queen e2, knight c5, and here looks like here it was a rare, a bit more rare move that uh, Caruana played. But to be honest with you, the move was, looks very logical because White is trying to open up the c file. Yes, most people probably would just take back with a pawn to open up the a file, but he did the opposite. He took back with a c pawn, and that way he can play bishop to e3 and open up the position you know use the c file to his advantage of course if black manages to have this pawn on c5 he will be better and bishop e7 castle but unfortunately he doesn't have a good way of getting his pawn on c5 so now c7 pawn is backward and the knight on c6 is vulnerable so there's a backward pawn we have on c7 and we have a vulnerable knight on c6 here as well okay so we see some problems here so bishop e7, knight c3, developing his knight, castles, bishop e3. White is just developing his pieces to good squares and getting ready to play rook a c1. This kind of position is very difficult and could be very annoying for black to play because you really want your pawn on c5 here. If you cannot get your pawn on c5, you're always going to be worse. You're always going to be basically suffering here because... He is just going to put pressure on you on the open files. The C file and the D file. Queen D7. Um, I remember perhaps uh, during the game uh, was analyzing this position a little bit and F6 was a very important move to play for Giri, which he didn't do. He had to take measures and play F6 quickly to try to eliminate this E5 pawn. And it looks like this was the best way for him to try to equalize the game. So... Perhaps uh, perhaps even here, he had to play the f6 move, but I don't think he did it. Yes? Why does he try to move his knight and play c5 and that gives him the position? Well, if you have a pawn on c5, imagine, you can play d4. Yeah. You can start marching down the pawns. So that's why you're trying to do this. So that's why you... Uh, oh, but then why does he move his knight and get his pawn to c5? Well, he's going to try. He's going to try. It's not easy. It's, he can try, but it's not so easy. It takes time to do that, okay? You have to move the knight. There's too much pressure going on here. There is a pressure on the D file. There is a pressure on the C file. A lot of pressure going on here. So that's why it's not so easy to do that, okay? Rook AD8. Yeah, this F6 idea was very important for Giri to play, I believe, and to try to equalize the game. So Rook D2 by Karwan. Yes? What does F6 do? I'm, I'm me, F6? F6 is... He's get rid of the e5 pawn. When, when you have bishops, you like open files. So you want to open the position. And that opens up the position. 
it gives a little bit more freedom and activity to his bishops. In the game, he did, didn't do that, and he was really, uh, throughout the whole game, under, under a lot of pressure. So that's fine. He actually did that later. Uh, sorry, actually, he did that a little bit later, but he should have done this earlier. That was the thing. In fact, he did that. I think he just did that now. But he did it a bit too late. He had to do it earlier. Like, even maybe here, f6, or after queen d7. Like, this was the best timing to do it. Rook Caruana doubled, and now he simply goes for this line. It's a forced sequence. Rook a d8. Knight takes e5. Knight takes c5. Pawn takes c5. Knight d5. Now, uh, White is lined up on a d-file. He's threatening discovery checks. He's threatening all kinds of ideas. So, Giri decided to go for this position. Rook d5. If black plays bishop d6, it's just still going to be worse. Yes. I was watching live, and Ben Feingold said that queen e6 was good. Here? Yeah. Well, queen e6 was probably a better try in this position. Position is still worse for black. There is no question about it. Uh, I'll explain why, but but let's okay. Let me uh, show you this first because then I will talk about this. Uh, usually, when you can get the rooks, two rooks for a queen, it's it's usually good. You're safe. But in this position, the problem was he could never exchange the bishops. If he could exchange the bishops, then he'll be fine. But he could never manage to exchange the bishops. And with the bishops on the board, it was a zero counterplay for black in the game. It was zero counterplay, that's why he lost the game, okay? So, uh, queen e6, okay, this move is also worse because after take, take rook c1. And now we see problems on this c pawn. We see a problem on e pawn. A lot of problems we are seeing in the position, okay? So this is not really, this is far from equality here, okay? Still there is a pressure here. Pressure for white and he he doesn't have almost he doesn't have any weaknesses and black has one more extra island and obviously some weak pawns here okay so giri went here he was you know he thought okay i'll be slightly worse but i can probably hold this position in some point i will swap the bishops and after i swap the bishops uh, probably there will be some chances to hold okay but uh he never managed to do that. Now, excellent move by Caruana. Queen c2, attacking the weak pawn on c7, but most importantly, which move he's stopping? Bishop c5. Excellent. He's stopping bishop c5. Remember, the conception here, black wants to exchange the bishops. After he does that, with two rooks, he can hold the position. If, if it's like equal material. Of course, if he loses a lot of pawns, then he's going to lose the game. So, but that's the idea. So now, the threat is queen c6. Attacking the a6 pawn, attacking the rook. So it's becoming some problems there, yeah? So that's why black had to play c5. Black had to play c5 here. And now, what did he play here? You remember? Yes. Go ahead. G3. Queen e4 is not going to run away. He wants to play g3 to have a proper luft for his king. And at some point play h4. To take away this bishop h5, g5 exchange forever. And now, even though again, what is the value of the two rooks? 10 pounds, right? The value of two rooks. Value of the queen is 9. But this is one of those examples, perhaps rare, you know, I would say. I would even call it rare example that where. Black is really worse in this position. Black is really worse here because uh, the, main, the main idea he's worse is he doesn't have any contraplay. So that's why it's, it's very important to have contraplay when you're playing these positions. So that's the idea, yes? Why is it better for black to trade the bishops? The two rooks have been better than the queen? Uh, no, because if you trade the bishops, right, you, with two rooks, you'll be able to attack on f2 and create counterplay. But with this bishop sitting here, he's cementing his position. He's cementing the position, and he can't do anything. So 
So that's why it's very important to. Uh, it's like a little game. Black wants to exchange the bishops. White is doing everything he can to stop it. If we take the bishops off the board, black shouldn't have that many difficulties holding it to a draw. Yeah, so that's the idea. Yeah, so that's the idea to play c5. So c5 was necessary, okay? And also this b if we put this pawn on b7, right? No problems whatsoever. That's why remember each pawn push is like a commitment. Okay? You make a commitment. And then if we can if this pawn was on b7, Anish Giri would play c6 and he could not do he, he wouldn't lose this game, he would just be rock solid. But one pawn push on b5 creates a huge difference. C5, G3. This is just to get a proper luft on G2 and also play H4. He goes King H8, H4, expanding, expanding. He wants to also continue pushing. Yeah. Rook D8, King H8. Uh, the reason behind it because light squares are weak and at some point. He is afraid to get pinned and some checks and pick up the pawn. It's a prophylactic move. But in reality, the problem for Giri is he doesn't have a contraplay. That's the main problem in this position. It's amazing with two rooks and, you know, doesn't look like that bad of a position, but zero contraplay. And that's the main problem why he lost this game. And it was really a smooth victory for Caruana. You don't see this kind of very smooth victories at that level, you know? When two almost 2800 battling each other, you see, you know, they always somebody trying to do some counterplay. But in this game, it was just nothing. Queen e4 now, centralization. It's just look how beautiful the queen is on e4. It's just attacking the rook, attacking the weak pawn, eyeing this weakness, you know, weak pawn in h7, pressure here. And again, blockading, block. He can't even push the pawn anymore. h6. And now King G2. Another prophylactic move here. And now Caruana is preparing G4, G5 push to expose the position of the Black's King. That's what he's trying to do. Bishop F6, King H3. You can't push the pawn on G4, G4, G4 because you'll drop the pawn. If you play H5, then you don't really have much of a counterplay. So that's why he goes King to H3. And now threatening to play g4, g5. Okay, let's not make any noise, please. So, g5, h5. Now, the move itself looks uh, completely bad, yeah? It looks like, why did he do that? He's going to lose the pawn. But he just didn't know what to do against this idea. Push, push, and expose the king, and... Great attack. I mean, h5 move, it's. He's certainly gonna lose the pawn, but he should have probably not played h5. Yes, absolutely agree with you. Excellent that you point out h5 move. That was excellent, yes. Absolutely. He played h5 because he wanted to prevent white from advancing. Absolutely. That's what he's trying to do, to prevent it. Uh, but the problem is that pawn is just gonna be so weak that you're gonna lose it. It's not like he had a better move here, but h5 seems like it's just kind of, kind of, uh, you know, bit expedite the, the process here, perhaps. Yes? Maybe not now, but earlier. Could he have played like rook d4 to try to get counterplay? Oh, when? Earlier. Um, this might be the best time he could do it, no? Maybe instead of h6. No, h6 is. I, I think. No, no, after. But I take. No, I think you have to put the bishop on f6. Yeah, Maybe you have to play rook d4 here. Oh, yeah. um, you could play this move, certainly, but I don't have to take you. That's one thing. I don't, I'm not forced to even take you. I could take you. I could take you, yeah, hypothetically. He takes? 
then, then some counterplay, yeah, some counterplay here. So you go here, you push, push. Now, not so clear who is actually winning here. <laughs> Looks like black might be suddenly winning. Okay. Well, it's certainly a very interesting move, rook d4. I believe that Ani should have tried this. H5 is it's just bad, yeah. He should have tried rook d4, but I don't think uh, Caruana was going to take this pawn. I think he was simply going to play queen b7 and then start collecting the queenside pawns. What about queen c6? Yeah, queen c6 is... Queen, yeah, probably queen, queen c6 is excellent. Yes, I agree. They're just winning a pawn now. That's the reason he didn't play that. I'm sure a uh, player like Giri considered this exchange sacrifice but he just didn't see a point i mean what is he really going to accomplish after queen c6 white is just simply going to collect the pawn one of these pawns and that's it so um h5 was played okay how are we going to win this though we're saying white is dominating and but how are we going to win this and make sure we do the job right to not allow any counterplay yes uh wait Oh, F3. Oh, you could play F3. What, is, what are you trying to do with F3? You could play F3, yes. That's a possible move. Yeah, F3 is a possible move. You can try to do that. But the problem is, it kind of weakens the position, you know? So that's why you don't want to play F3. It will weaken your position a little bit. I would like to keep the pawn on F2 because it's protecting my position. Okay? So that's why it's important to keep the pawn on F2. So remember that. If you push the pawn on f3, then it's going to be a little bit of counterplay with rook d3. Yes? Queen g6? Or a4. Creating additional weaknesses. That's what he's trying to do. Queen g6, you will always have it. He cannot secure this square. So what Caruana is trying to do, he's trying to create additional weaknesses on the queen side. Loosen up the position. You said in the previous lecture, so one. Area yeah, that's the Russian chess school. Huh? One weakness is not enough to win. You have to create the second one. Here, he's creating the third one, probably. You know, because there's just weakness here, weakness here. I mean, we know that more weaknesses opponent has, more chances you're going to have to uh, win without much difficulty. So that's why you want to try to create as many weaknesses as possible. Okay? And that's why a4 is doing very patient play by Caruana. He's not just going after the pawn. He can He could have done that, but he's not rushing on that matter. Rook d3 now. Giri has been sitting basically the past ten moves, trying to defend the position. So finally, he's saying, "Okay, let me try to get some kind of counterplay at least going." Takes. Now we have a couple of loose pawns here as well. Queen g6. Trying to pick out that h5 pawn, right? e4. Black don't know what to do, so just trying to toss the pawn in and try to take the b2 pawn or something. Check. Goes here. Queen f5. Now, he picked up the h5 pawn. Now he is after the e4 pawn. Again, the, the b3 pawn cannot be taken because of the check. So that's why he took on b2. Queen e4. As you can see now, blocking is getting more exposed here with only one pawn being there. Rook is under pressure, c5 pawn as well. The only way for block is to try to, again, get these bishops off the board. And that's what he's trying to do. He's tossing the pawn in to liquidate the queen side in the hope that he can exchange the bishops and somehow try to hold. But the problem for him is his king is now very exposed. Rook d5 and g4. Now, let's stop here for a moment and try to understand how white can win this position. You have three pawns versus one, but two rooks are active. And we know that black is going to try to exchange the bishop to create some more chances. Because at the end of the day, if you have only one extra pawn, you might not be able to win in the king and pawn endgame, for example. So what Caruana is trying to do here, and he did this very well, he just expanded his pawns. He just pushed g4, eight. he just expanded the pawns to, to basically come forward 
and open up this king and create mating threats. That's why he's just advancing the pawns. So now he goes king h8. Now he continue. Who, who can mention what this pawn on g5 is doing that is very important in this position? What is the pawn on g5 doing here? Besides gaining space, what is it doing? Yes. That's, he's doing that too. But also, bishop had a stable square, right? Bishop had a stable square on f6 that he could just put it there and not to worry about anything. Now, he doesn't have that square. So this bishop now, everyone, doesn't have now a stable square any longer. Okay? That's what just happened. Now, Giddy plays bishop d4, and it looks like he's accomplishing that task of exchanging the bishop. But the problem is now, Caruana's pawns are too advanced. We take queen f7. Preparing some more attacking ideas. Check and g6. He just wants to go queen check and g6. Rook d7. This is probably not a good move. It's losing right away. Uh, there, there, were, there were some ways maybe to put up a little bit more resilient defense here. Perhaps starting with rook d5, you know? That might have been a little bit better. Because what Giri did, I think he was in time trouble, so he just allowed this trick. And g6. Now, queen h7, check, we'll pick up the third pawn. And three connected pass pawns, there's no chance. So here, perhaps, a little bit more resilient defense could have been maybe something like rook, uh, four to, uh, rook d4 to d5 and try to put some pressure. White, white will probably still win with king g4 and prepare the f4, but it would have been a little bit more work. Well, yes, question? Because he's gaining, uh, he's trying to make a 40 moves, that's why. Yeah, but what if he just played queen h5 right away? Uh, well, yeah, he just, he just wanted to make the time control, get that, get it over with, that's why. Uh, there's no big reason why he did that. He could have played that right away, I agree, but this way he made the time control. He just sat there, think about it. He doesn't have to worry about the time. Now, g6, now he wants to go queen h7 check and queen h8. That's what he's trying to do. Now, this g7 pawn cannot be protected. And when g7 pawn is gone, that's it. You cannot defend this position. So he goes here, check. Now, three connected pawns. Giri is still trying to hold, but Queen H8 is an excellent move, keeping the king away so he cannot get closer. Now getting ready to push and promote the pawn. Check, King H2. Not here, okay? Because that would be a blunder. Rook G4 check picks up the pawn. You go here. Again, rooks cannot coordinate here. If they were a little bit differently placed, maybe he would have some chance. But now G pawn is just simply going to push down G7 and 8. So now. After King H8, I believe he resigned. And this victory actually helped Caruana to finish tie for second. So it was an important win. A uh, big difference in the prize money as well. Each win in this tournament was huge. So, But because, you know, there were not as many decisive. So basically, so won the tournament with two wins and seven draws. So a lot of people came only half a point behind him. But... Uh, it shows how close it was, you know, these players. They just played this here like uh, four days ago. I didn't realize this. Yeah. Uh, four days ago they played this game, and uh, yeah, Fabiano won. And unfortunately for Giri, it was uh, another bad tournament. And uh, so he's he hasn't been playing that well last two tournaments at least. So his rating is going down a little bit. Okay, so this was the game of... Uh, uh, Caruana's victory against Giri. We have time for one study, so I want to give you one study at the end. Some good study to work on, okay? So let's see if you can find a way to save the game, this one. It looks like a very difficult position. It looks like your knight is trapped, and you have, but you're going to have a way of saving this game, okay? All right.
white to play, white to play, and you need to make a draw here, okay? Huh? Oh, you've seen this one before. Okay, well, just try to remember the solution then. It's not so easy. Even if you've seen it a while ago, it still would be good to review. So, white to play and draw. The problem, the knight on a8 is trapped. It cannot go back. That is the problem. Your knight is trapped, and uh, if you don't play this correctly, you will lose your knight, and of course you lose the game. Okay, well, let's let's give everybody a chance to solve this. Don't rush. Let's give a little chance, okay? A lot of these studies, they have this idea that at the end it ends with a steel mate, okay? Sometimes you don't think you can do it, but there are positions where you can force your king somewhere that in order to improve the position, he has to steal mate here. Or otherwise he will have to he will lose his last piece. So that's the idea to remember. The first idea I think first move is bit uh, you know you have you need the first move to create any chances because it looks like it's just hopeless. One, two, I take it, and I have the right color bishop. I have the right color bishop, everybody, so that's important. If this was a light square bishop, yes, you could make a draw. Because the wrong color. But what you gonna need to do first here? A4. A4, excellent. Make excellent job. Yes. A4. Now you wanna play A5 and get the knight on B6. So if he lets you do that, you're gonna sack the knight. If he takes with a pawn, his last pawn is gone, so that's a draw. No pawns, no win. If he takes this way, you take if he takes with the king, we know the side pawn you cannot win. Just king will sit in front. He cannot win. If he takes with this, he can win this position if his king gets in front of the pawn. But unfortunately, he can never do that. You will oppose him, and then you will make a draw here. Okay? So he has to play the move a5 absolutely necessary. Now, what to do? A very important to play this move first before you you go for another idea. King d3, the problem you lose now after this move. Because you go here, I face you king c6. And you are in what we call it in suksuwan. Knight b6, I go be the bishop. And this trick doesn't work here because I have bishop e1. Bishop b6 is a draw. King a6. That's the that's the solution actually. That's the solution. But how we can achieve that? See, very directly king d3 doesn't work. And here, by the way, you're in suksuan. So you go here. He just goes here. He takes you and he goes here. Suksuan. Mm -hmm. So. Aha! Uh -huh. Excellent! Excellent uh, in between move, intermezzo, yeah? Attack this guy. If he goes away, then we simply move the knight out. If he goes somewhere here, he's gonna be on the way. Okay? So he has to go now here or here, it doesn't matter. These are the two uh, squares he can do. Now, what do we do now? Excellent. Excellent, we're coming here to win the pawn. So he has to go here now. Knight c7. Knight c7. King b5. See, bishop cannot defend from the side anymore. So has to go here. King a6. Six. Bishop cannot move, you take the pawn. <laughs> King c6, stalemate. Got it? That is the idea to remember. It looks impossible. It looks like completely hopeless with a knight on A. But again, that's why we do studies, okay? That's why we need to do the studies to improve on our imagination, to see more ideas, how we can try to salvage, you know, 
and get a draw in a position that looks completely hopeless. I just heard here this week somewhere it said that players like me will do openings of tactics for grandmasters do studies. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, excellent, everybody. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming, and uh, hope to see you next week, okay?